to say thank you very much to our last guests. It was the first time having five people on the screen at once. We had a we had a quiz. Um, if you didn't uh, watch it or listen to it, uh, we had John, Josh, Martin, and Calvin, and they were given answers just based on my opinions, which is an awful thing to do because it leaves me with power. And they, uh, well, some of them didn't mind, and some of them maybe uh, did a little bit, but it was a bit of crack. And if you didn't get a chance to listen, to go back. And we really appreciate the, the lads coming on. Uh, giving up a bit of time on in their uh, it was a Saturday evening that we recorded it during the the heat wave and uh, so thanks to the lads and thanks for listening everyone uh, subscribe to your YouTube channel if you would um because uh, it's always helpful I'm not going to go on too much going to get into it because uh, the heat wave is still on this <laughs> this will be coming out a bit later on we might it may be long in the distance the heat wave but it'll be uh we'll, it'll be coming out a bit later but we're on the sunday and it's still quite warm so let's go uh today my guest is the entertainment coordinator for black and irish and a co-host for the podcast points of malt and his name is kenny olani how are you doing kenny good thank you thank you for having me on no it's great to have you on I, I, that's what i want to ask you actually how do you like the weather like it's been over the last week um i won't lie most of it i've loved right like i I'm not I'm not a huge fan of the cold. I always say to my girlfriend, I cannot, I really cannot stand the cold. And then like wet as well. And like, yeah, just doesn't do it for me. I it has been like unnaturally warm and something that you're not used to, especially living in Ireland and stuff. So it's kind of like you do you will complain about it. And I think it's a bit, it's a really Irish because I'm gonna complain about the weather no matter what. Um, but I've probably I've enjoyed it more than I've hated it. I yeah. prefer this like to it to be it to be especially in the summer. I prefer it to be like this in the summer than yeah. it to be like really rainy and like what a waste of a summer, you know? Yeah, I get that. I think the the one thing, like you said there about the complain uh, people complaining, and I didn't really want to complain about it. And I and I didn't for about four days, okay. And then what happened started to when you meeting people in shops and you're you're out and about or whatever and you're talking to people, and it start I realized it started to creep in a little bit. Yeah, and you, you, you don't want to do that because some people love it, and so like like me, uh, I would say um, we're recording this on the Sunday, so uh, this this is coming out a few days later. But the Saturday was the nicest day so far because uh, you're in Dublin, aren't you, Kenny? I'm I'm actually in Belfast at the moment. Sorry, Belfast. So yeah, we had in, in the in the Midlands. It was obviously a couple of degrees warmer as it always is. But yesterday there was like this tiny little breeze coming in the window, just yeah. like <laughs> it was just enough to kind of just, I don't know, it was pleasant, you know. Yeah. And I like, like you say, I don't want the, the summer to be wet and windy and you know miserable. But sometimes when it's like thirty degrees and you're in bed and you just can't breathe, it's yeah, that yeah. Though if, if I'm gonna complain about any time, it's probably at night when I can't sleep. Yeah. That's when it really. That's when I'd be like, okay, yeah, this is ridiculous now. <laughs> yeah. but i think i think we i think in ireland we're not used to sort of because if when i'm away and stuff like that i don't really complain about it because mm. it's part of the sort of part of the part of part of being away and like there's aircon and especially if you're in like places like italy or like spain and stuff like that and portugal like but i think in ireland there's no like aircon in the houses and stuff so maybe going forward maybe that's something we're going to need to introduce if you yeah. know like seeing as global warming is like yeah climate change this is probably going to, someone keeps saying this is going to be the um, coldest summer that we'll have. And so, yeah. From, from now on? Gonna, like, Yeah, from now on. Oh, so, we'll, look, we'll see. Yeah, we'll, we'll see. see. We'll, <laughs> yeah, let's not jump ahead of ourselves just yet. But yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I, God, I hope not. Um, listen, Kenny, well, could you tell us a, a short history of your upbringing, please? Um, yeah, so basically, um, I was born in Nigeria. Um, I moved to Ireland when I was about... Four years old um I, we moved we lived in carlo for a bit for about two years um, i started school there um started like primary school there, and then i moved in first class i moved we moved to dublin i was living in blanche for 10 odd years um, um about eight years maybe um before then moving to Valbriggan. um when i was in like third year of secondary school and yeah so like my child yeah look upbringing wise it, like it was cool it was grand like i was I went, I, I started all my education in Ireland from like primary school to, to college. Um, I went to, so I went to Trinity College and um, got a degree in law and business. Um, I don't use the law. Um, 
I realized very quickly that I'm not a fan of the law, <laughs> um, but uh, yeah, it was a good, it was, it was, I suppose a good degree to have and it's good standing. It's something so as like, a, as an African sort of child growing up in Ireland, the one thing that your parents always say to you is make sure you get a degree, make sure you get, it. so you get your job. And so you sort of set your, you sort of help yourself. Um, so I suppose that's probably what, probably what been my biggest achievement and something I've been most proud about. Um, and yeah, so at, and so yeah, I grew up in um, Blanche, um, pretty like not nothing sort of major to write home about. I have two sisters, um, and it's just my, my mom and my and my sisters. So me and my girls have been just chugging our ch- chugging our way all all through. It's just, it's been, which has been good. It says it's given me, I suppose, a good a good perspe- perspective on life where I'm sort of. I think I've been raised decently and like mm-hmm. understand um, sort of both sexes and both genders and like uh, different cultures and stuff like that, especially sort of growing up in Ireland and going to like predominantly Irish school um, like learning Irish, learning about Irish history, learning about other, other types of history, geography, all that kind of stuff. Um, and then obviously going to college and like, I think I've sort of had a, I would I would I wouldn't say it's unique because I think there's a lot of people in my position, like especially use like migrants from like Nigeria and the likes. But I think it's been a very um sort of I think it's one, it's an experience that like only very, very few people can say that they have. And I think it's really like sort of molded where I am now. Um aside from that, like I suppose. But I think when I moved to Barbrigan, that was probably a big thing for me. I didn't want to move originally because I was, again, you're, you're in school, you you love your friends, you're like, oh, all this kind of stuff. But then when I moved to Barbrigan, it was probably the best thing I could ever do because that's when I really sort of started to come into myself a lot more. Um, I started to sort of, my the, my mates that are my mates now and I got my good friends that I do a lot of different things with, like quite small, like you said, and Black and Irish, that's where I sort of met them and got involved in sort of, and really become became comfortable in myself within my sort of duality of being black and Irish, Nigerian and Irish. Um, so I think, for, yeah, that's and I suppose that's where I am now. I, like I, I, I am currently working in um, in a bank sort of as a programs coordinator for um, um, our for our youth programs, um, working mainly on our um, graduate program and supporting the graduate program coordinators. And yeah, it's been good. It's been good so far. Um, I'm up in Belfast. I I, sort of, I moved about three, four months ago now, which okay. is a new experience living by myself. Um, I, I lived away from home for a year and a bit, and then the pandemic, I had to go back home. But now I'm sort of out, out on my own um, up here, which is grand. My best mate from my childhood is up here. Like my girlfriend's up here as well. So it's not like I'm too lonely. Yeah. <laughs> um, but yeah, I suppose that's me in a nutshell. And then obviously as well as that, like, like I think throughout college, I did a lot of stuff with like Afro Caribbean societies. I I got into college to Trinity Access program, um, which again it was really sort of something that like I'm very, I'm very privileged that I got to, and like I did a lot of volunteering with them, a lot of help with in the old in my old school and schools around Dublin, sort of mentoring and stuff like that, um, and yeah, I've. Just sort of you sort of you think back and you you have to you actually done you did a lot through college like I said of um we started pints of malt um I think got throughout to towards the end of college where we just like we'll probably get into it in a bit and get yeah. started um, another thing like pints of um slight motive um, which is an online urban platform where we just promote sort of urban acts in Ireland and stuff like that so um and that's all been just to my friends and to sort of the, the interests I have so yeah I suppose Brilliant. that's me in a nutshell I hope that gives that's a good good answer that's extensive I like it um <laughs> I wanted to ask actually about you know the African heritage was that something that was uh, obviously uh, through your mother and your sisters was carried on but yep. was it something that you uh, sought out as well you know without the kind of direction of them um being honest, I wouldn't say so, especially when I was younger. Mm. Um, it was just what I knew. Um, okay. So like growing, like my mom would always sort of speak our native tongue to us in Yoruba. Um, she'd always cook your um, um, Nigerian food. 
we'd always obviously all my cousins were all of us are Nigerian my aunties and uncles we'd go to like our church would predominantly be Af an African church and um, we'd sort of so all that was sort of just we just grew up in it and mm. um, it wasn't something it wasn't like I was given a choice of sort of to find out about my heritage I was it was just it was just given to me it was just, yeah. just something I grew up with um so but I suppose it was important that when I got a bit older to sort of figure out where I was going or where because like obviously throughout school you go into school and you're like you're not indoctrinated but you're living the Irish way of life you're speaking to Irish students you're sort of understanding Irish history Irish people you're into you're, all your teachers are Irish you're interacting with Irish people so like you, part of society is is Irish so like I think at a stage you need to like for me anyway I think I didn't sort of realize until I thought, thought back it was like you have to figure out where you are in the sort of the world or in society and I think going to Babuigan that's one thing because Babuigan is like really sort of diverse and really ethnic and there's a lot of black people and 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 in our, in, um, in Babuigan and like my school was like very very mixed and I suppose having that and being able to sort of hang out with my black friends in an mm -hmm. Irish setting and us sort of being together and understand having like these shared experiences was where I sort of realized that okay I'm very proud of my Irish heritage of and but or of my Irish upbringing but I'm still very proud of my Nigerian heritage mm -hmm. and being Yoruba and being sort of um an African man or an I grew up in Ireland who's who feels Irish as well mm -hmm. you know so I think it was I don't think I would ever I would ever be sort of diverged from like the African inside me just be, be, just because of how I grew up and just because of how yeah. my my mom is my mom spent more like I suppose the majority of her like a young young life in Nigeria so she coming over she had the Nigerian mentality so did my cousins so did my uncles my aunties and I grew, and those are the people who raised me so it's like it was never a case of sort of not discovering or not understanding mm. like my Nigerian side um, or African side. I suppose it, it does, you do, when you do get older, you do have to sort of make a conscious effort to sort of stay mm. in tune with it. Um, I will admit that like I could be a lot more in tune. Like, there's a lot more I could do. There's a lot more, like I can speak the language a little bit, like what I could, I, I would have loved to be able to like speak it fluently and not sort of people correct me on my different <laughs> words and stuff like that. But um it's not sort of the big concern i'm sort of comfortable in sort of how i was raised and how i like how i feel about sort of my traditions and my heritage and like my background you know yeah i think that's i think that's fair enough yeah um kenny when, when did you first become aware of uh, mental health um i think i think it was in college when people start when you you get a bit older and like it was when they like it was that's when like those conversations started to happen and you started to notice the conversations when you're like when it was in school you you go to school and you're just hanging out with the lads you you having a laugh all that kind of stuff yeah. you know but when you're a bit older you sort of start getting a lot i think there's a lot more pressure on you and then as well as that you see you started to be more enlightened and sort of enlightened i suppose and sort of aware of things and aware of your surroundings and aware of different people and different backgrounds and stuff. And I think that's when I become aware of like mental health and sort of the importance of it and sort of the sort of the different types of mental health and the different ways it affects different people and the different ways how sort of to be respectful of that and to sort of understand that because it wouldn't be something like, I'll be honest, it wouldn't be something that would be naturally said in an African household or in okay. a Nigerian household, because especially not when I was growing up or like when if you if you if you're back in Africa and stuff like that, more and more these days, it's a very much commonplace. But it's still but like when I was growing up, it wouldn't be something that you'd be aware of, because like part of it is like, especially being a migrant coming in, you don't really have time to worry about that. Like my mom doesn't really have time to worry about her mental health and stuff like that because she was just trying to provide for her three kids and trying to work and making sure that she's okay. 
like in obviously with time and when we got older and when when she got older we begin to understand that and begin to like sort of have conversations and like to speak about our feelings and stuff and like and like not sort of bottle everything in mm. but like you sometimes you don't have the look that luxury um so i think it's when i was in college i began to sort of really be aware that like okay there are there are certain things that you need to sort of have to think about and really be aware of and like this the certain feelings that you have it's i suppose normal it's normal yeah. to sort of feel stressed it's normal to feel overwhelmed it's normal to sort of um not feel like things are right or something's up you know so yeah i think those that's when i started really in a nutshell college when i was in college that's when i started yeah. really thinking about mental health I think at that age as well, like, you know, if you're in college or you're, or you don't go to college, but there is a certain, uh, you know, uh, conversation that starts between friends that they're able to kind of be a little bit more open. And, and even yeah. if it's not so much as a, a case of someone, someone coming to you and saying, you know, I think I may be depressed or I think I may have anxiety. The, the subjects are approached, you know, in, in different ways. And it's good yeah. it, that even if it's, even if it's that at that age that, that it's discussed. Um, can could I, you sorry, tell us? Can I, sorry, yeah, can I ask it. you? Um, when did you just like start um, sort of thinking about mental health or like discovered it and stuff? Um, so I was like, I was diagnosed when I was twenty one with with depression, and okay. uh, I was given you know kind of a mild uh, antidepressant, and uh, I started I started taking it, and then I thought, unfortunately, I know now like it's unfortunate that I decided that oh no, I don't need this, and I stopped taking it pretty qu- pretty quickly, maybe a year afterwards. And then it was then, sorry, and then it was when I was 27 and I had a, a, a breakdown and then it became so much worse. And I, and I often wonder if I had have, you know, hung in there, maybe I'd gone to some therapy sessions when I was 21. Um, would it have helped? You know, would it have eased a bit? But it's one of those things that if you think about, you, you know, I don't know either way. I don't yeah. know what it would have been. So, yeah, it was it was at that age. But again, I know I, that I, there was no conversations. I hadn't had conversations about it. And like you were saying about it in an African household, when you were growing up, it wouldn't have been mentioned in an Irish household. It wouldn't have been uh, mentioned either. You know, it's just there was a more uh, it, you, you'll know yourself, but there's this, there's that kind of stiff like not stiff upper lip but that kind of stern kind of you know you're yeah. you're you're gra- i'll be grand that kind of thing more yeah. than anything yeah. and uh, yeah so so yeah it's it's one of those ones that i look back and i kind of wonder otherwise but you know i mean we're all progressing and all these conversations we're having with yourself and with everybody else who's come on it's it's helped an awful lot and and hopefully fingers crossed this helps some other people who have listened in and to reach out a bit. um can you tell us actually um what black and irish is and how you became involved in it. Yeah, so Black and Irish started around this time last year, um, at the start of June. So when the whole sort of George Floyd incident happened, um, the lads at Black and Irish, um, the five guys who started it, um, they sort of wanted to start like a platform to sort of, firstly, like raise awareness, um, but all, but also more importantly, and where the platform really is, it really is to, what the platform really is to do to sort of celebrate and sort of promote and highlight Black and Irish stories, and um, because I think for too long people have been sort of there's like there's not mountains and or millions of Black people in Ireland, but there is enough for them to all have sort of these different experiences that are very unique to them mm-hmm. and like that a lot of people don't understand and don't realize. And, and sometimes they're not celebrated, either they're not sort of highlighted or they're not celebrated. So that's what the platform is basically. And it started out as the guys sort of just getting in um, submissions from different people just telling their stories, what they, how it's been living in Ireland as a black person, um, what they do, how they go about it, what their hopes for Ireland going forward as to sort of battle racism and stuff like that. And that's how it started. And then obviously it just grew from there um, they, the platform just got bigger and bigger people sort of were, I, I think people were interested especially at that time really interested to sort of maybe do better mm-hmm. and sort of start to really understand and listen to black people um, and black and mixed race people and sort of to understand the experiences and understand what can be done and how ch- what changes can be made and I suppose that's where this that's where the platform started and since then they've sort of grown out into doing different campaigns for like 
so so Black History Month, um, month um, like there was a music week, there was a sport, there was I think there's a sports week coming up, and I don't know if there was one before where it's just talking about like Black and Irish, Black mixed race and Irish people who have done some great stuff in Ireland through music, in Black history, um, etc. Um, and then all then sort of from there, the guys have sort of tried to branch out and sort of get involved in things like education, trying to really lobby to sort of make some differences in education, in politics, um, in the community, and then also in entertainment um, and sort of media and events and stuff like that, and really just be a platform where, so if someone is coming to Ireland, and they want to know sort of what the, the Black and Irish experience and what the our Black and Irish community is like, the platform Black and Irish is there for you to go to and you can understand and you really try and sort of make a difference in the, in the society that we live in. Because I think there's a lot to do in sort of education. There's a lot to do in politics. There's a lot more sort of um, to do in business, in entertainment. There's a lot more to do in all spheres of life where we can really sort of really bring that drive that inclusion that people continue to talk about will really drive it home um so yeah so that's how so the guys sort of try to expand the team and bring in different coordinators for different areas so they brought in so i applied they, they put out a notice for like different coordinators and stuff like that and it was so and so they bought i i initially i actually applied to do events for with them because i've been running events pretty like since college but then i didn't get it someone else got it fantastic fantastic lady Fiona she did she's super super good at her job but like they wanted to bring me in as like an ENS, ENS coordinator and mm. um, to just sort of help in that sphere of linking black and Irish with more sort of platforms and entertainment platforms and sort of um social platforms that are doing some really cool stuff like podcasts um slight motive who sort of run events and like um have a website and then sort of other sort of entertainment spheres like music um, art that kind of thing movies so that's where I came in and that's what I've been helping out with and we've just been sort of working the past couple of months to get some some really cool ideas some really cool initiatives together to sort of just bring the community together just mm. give them something give people sort of celebrate black mixed race talent and celebrate in the best possible way and in the way that will sort of benefit obviously the people and also sort of just highlight just the the wide range of talent that we have in, in Ireland, really. Yeah, and I think everybody should should go on and follow it on uh, Black and Irish on Instagram and on Facebook and things like that because I I uh, I wonder when I started following it, I don't know, you know, on Instagram if it comes down on the part where it says you know uh, pages you should follow. I can't remember if it was that or what it was, yeah. but it, I clicked onto it and. I was so so many people follow it, which is brilliant, obviously. Yeah. And loads of my friends followed it, and I was I, I didn't even I wasn't even aware of it. But then having uh, caught up with uh, things, and uh, as you say about when you talk about entertainment, but also about like social issues and um, sports, you know, celebrating the athletes who are representing Ireland in in so many different sports, um, who are black or from a mixed race uh, background. It's incredible. It's an incredible platform for that. And obviously there's the podcast as well. And it's all yeah. education as it goes along. Yeah. Yeah. That's the uh, that's one thing I forgot to mention. The one thing that this the platform is really about is about educating and sort of working together with both black people and people of other races. Like um it's like I think one of our like philosophies and it's not it's trying we're not trying to be sort of combative or like mm. Do you know, there, like, there's this whole thing where, like, people think, like, BLM is all about sort of trying to, like, fight or trying to sort of go and sort of, um, like, kill all white people or something like that. It's mm. not that. It's more just about sort of showing that there is a community of people that are sort of being marginalized and that should really be celebrated and should really be listened to and sort of educating people on how we can do better and how, what we can do and sort of what's the right thing to say what's not the right thing to say like you know so it's really that education piece and working together piece like we've started to work with like on Kardashian Kana on a load of different initiatives like again the education board lobbying them and like lobbying different businesses and stuff and like giving different talks to different like, to, uh, at different places to sort of just really just get the word out there and sort of 
really bring people together and bring people and educate people and say it's okay it's about working together that's the only way we can get we can sort of make a difference I, it yeah. sounds as cliche as it sounds it's really and truly the only way you can make it well that's the thing and it is it, it's it, cliches are, are like that for a reason you know yeah. and i think you know uh the, the, talking about education actually kenny because you put up a you had a video up on facebook i think it was back in august of last year it was in the summer of last year anyway and and you talked about um it was kind of to do with anxiety but it was obviously more to do with race um uh, can you remember the video for what? yeah i think yeah i think it was for the black and irish page yeah, and yeah. it was sort of so the, again so that was before i was with them but they reached out to me to sort of do a video or post about like how i feel about the whole issue and like what like my feelings on the matter and like how what you can do and yeah at the time i was it was really for me it was i wouldn't say it was from a place of pain or like but it was really hard at that time because okay. like there was a lot happening and um, last year was especially obviously being in the pandemic that was one thing and then the whole George Floyd incident and then sort of the whole bringing up these all all these like race issues and all these things that happened sort of in your past that you sort of like you suppress and you don't realize and you don't really talk about I remember we had it like me and the boys we had an episode around that time and we were talk, chatting about it and there's a lot of things that like you sort of push over and you're like that was actually not cool at all that was mm. something that like maybe it didn't sort of hurt us at the time but it was something that does affect you and does and it shouldn't have happened so like I was very I was very fed up at that time I, I'll be honest and like I spoke I tried to spoke as like speak as sort of honestly as possible about my feelings and how I felt about the issue and how like what people can do and how I've been in scenarios where I felt quite nervous and I felt quite sort of anxious. And I suppose that's been, that's one of the big things where I would say like my mental health has sort of come to fore where I'm in scenarios or in situations that I feel really, really aware of myself. Like I suppose I'll give you an example. So me and my girlfriend it was a really good weather last last week so we went up to this port, this place called port Stewart, port rush mm. um up north um sort of it's near where she lives so she she wanted to tell, show me that it was just a really nice port area and stuff like that and one of the big things that i was i, I didn't say it to her she probably won't hear this she will only hear it here but one of the big things i was really nervous about was like being the only or one of the few sort of ethnic people there or black people there because like Ireland you think I like Ireland is like not that many black people but in Northern Ireland it's even less black people and sort of in sort of Port Rush and Port Stewart where it's very for the local and stuff like that they'd they'd be even less black people so part of me going like we were going to the beach and I felt quite there was times when I was feeling quite nervous and I was just feeling like like I didn't want to get stares I didn't want to sort of feel out of place and stuff and i spoke about this in that video where there's been certain scenarios where you just feel out of place like you feel really sort of like people are watching you and, pe and people have an eyes on you and like that i suppose that that in in your head you sort of it can just be quite, quite nerve-wracking and i don't i don't know how to describe it like it's just quite like you don't you, you try not you try and enjoy yourself but you can't because you're still very wary of your surroundings yeah. and like it wasn't until so when we got when we got to the beach I, there was a few other sort of black people on the beach and then i i felt a bit more relaxed mm. and it was strange it was it's just because like i don't know that from adam they were like literally like a good bit away from me but like the fact they were there just made it feel a lot more comforting mm. you know and i think I said in that video there's been times when i've been sort of in in work or in college or like in bars and stuff like that where i'm really and truly the only black person there and that is scary like i like it's can be quite scary because you just don't know people's intentions and you don't know how people feel about you mm. and that's for i think as black people that's something that really does affect it can affect you because you're always on edge. You're mm. always like, am I going into this? Are people going to like me for me or 
are, are people gonna un, like if people don't like me because because they think I'm a dick that's fine that's cool I, I like I can accept that like I, I, my mom is always need to like know that like some people just won't like it it's cool yeah but yeah. like if people don't like me because of my race or because of my background then it's like but I'm not like what can I do to help that mm. like I'm not like there's nothing I can do you know so that's I suppose in that aspect you it is it is quite nerve-wracking and it is probably for me the one the times when i feel most anxious when i'm going into that sort of environment when like like you're going into a job interview and like or you're going into work and like you're the, one of the only black people there you just you're always on edge because there's someone's actually um another sorry i'm, I'm rambling a bit no, but it's good. just it's like um i started this lady, this new lady started at my workplace um, a couple of months back and she's from South Africa. And so obviously she's sort of, the whole the situation there is completely different and mm. she's a mixed race lady. And she was telling me that, she said something really interesting. She was like, you feel invisible most of the time because like nobody really cares if, if, you, like, if you're black, but if, but you do still feel very visible because if something happens or something goes off, you feel like you're the first person that's going to get the blame or mm. you're the first person that's going to be pointed to and like that can be quite scary and quite unnerving like i like it's and it's quite hard to explain to white people sometimes and it's quite hard to sort of like sometimes it's like i've like tried to explain this to like like my girlfriend and stuff like that and it's quite sometimes it's quite hard for her to understand which is fair enough mm. but like it is something that can be quite um quite unnerving and i think that's what i mentioned in the video and that's i suppose that's where people need to try and help do better and try and sort of sort of increase the diversity in different areas and then so people don't feel like they're the odd one out or people don't feel like they are um the sort of token black person or that if they are if i am louder than everybody else it's because i am i am black or i'm angry and stuff it's, yeah yeah you know so those kind of things can get you quite can get you quite emotional and can get you quite like you try not to rise to it or you try quite try not to get upset by it but it does it is upsetting and it is yeah it is like sort of a deep thing to sort of deal with mentally um which yeah it, yeah it's quite tough sometimes yeah. so when you talk about that kenny and you, and you talk about you mentioned about when you were growing up and uh, you know the, maybe the incidences that happened when you were growing up um do you find it easy for yourself and your 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 mates to discuss these things is, is it easier because um not so much that you've you've all been through it together or anything like that but like talking about something like mental health, there can be an awkwardness with certain friends, you know. Yeah. Um, but when you're talking about that, which is a, a huge effect on your mental health, if you do bottle it up, can you talk about your talk with it uh, uh, to your friends openly? Um, yes, I I think so. I think we're at that stage where we can be where we can yeah. be very quite open to it. I think the way my friends and we approach it is we sort of. And this probably the same, like the same way we, we talk about it on the podcast, actually, we're quite like, we're quite jokey about it. Mm. And we're quite jokey about our experiences and like our stories because, and I think that's just like a bit of a coping me mechanism and a bit of like sort of how we were raised and how we grew up. Like, mm. like so, yeah, people, people, people are going to be dicks. People are, are going to be racist unfortunately that's what we've had to deal with like we can all we do have all shared experiences i think last year when hearing people's stories like especially around that whole george floyd incident when people were talking about what happened to them in school what happened to them like in society we up all those um, posts that were on black and irish almost every single one of them you can relate to because you're like mm. that's happened to me in some aspect or another i understand where you're coming from i've seen that happen to me or my friends or my family and it does make it easier to talk about. And it does, like for the lads, I would say, I hope so anyway, that like we can sort of have an honest and frank chat about it. We are quite jokey on the pod and stuff like that, mm. but there are times when, like very rarely, I admit, but there are times when we like are honest with ourselves and, and saying like, yeah, that, that was shit. That was yeah. really bad. And that's something that we should, like you shouldn't really, it shouldn't happen. And, but, 
I think just having the chat about it and just saying and like understanding we're coming from the same place and we understand each other. I think that helps for me. It really helps. It's just, it makes you don't feel as alone. You don't yeah. feel as sort of stand out that like you don't stand out as much. And I think that's the same with when you talk about like sort of mental health and like when, even when I talk about stuff, like stuff that's stressing me, like, like work or like in college or like even if your girlfriend is stressing you a bit or something like that, you know, just having those conversations with people who get it and understand it just makes it a lot better. Yeah. And like, you know, so yeah. I it's agree. very, do you, uh, do you know, I find with it, Kenny, when, when you, when you are talking to people, um, who may have shared experiences, whatever the experiences might be. Uh, and you, you, self, you, self, you said yourself and your mates would be on the podcast and you have a laugh about it. There's, it's very, very therapeutic. And, you know, as long as you know that, like, if you really need to have a serious, proper conversation, it's there. Yeah. The, the approach of having a laugh about it, um, it, if it works for you, well, then that's the way to go, you know, yep. until, it's, until you need to go another way. That's, um, like that's one of the, that's one of the reasons why we started a podcast like mm. I remember in college we spent a lot of time funking class and just like chilling in one of the rooms and stuff like that and we'd have these really sort of long con winding conversations about anything and everything about, especially about growing up and like our experiences growing up and a lot of them were like quite candid right we're quite honest with ourselves and quite sort of like frank with ourselves and like I do know there's someone some of my friends who like we'd regularly or we like we try regularly to have a conversation and ch check in and say how are we what's going on and that's that's what that's where it started that's where the pod started and that's what like we start like and I think that's for me that's been important and that's why like I'm so grateful for sort of being able like moving to Bob Wigan and meeting these those friends and like then going to college with a lot of them and sort of meeting a few, some in college and like having a really cool network of different people who really sort of understand me and understand because we've sort of had that shared connection of being black and Irish or being Nigerian being Yoruba and Irish but also growing up in the education system here mm. getting involved in the community here getting involved in a college life here and like going into work here so you sort of it's it really does make it does help you sort of get through life and makes things a lot easier and and makes sort of speaking or like the thoughts in your head sometimes they can get the they can cloud you and get too much but like speaking to someone else or having someone else to speak about them really helps mm -hmm. like really really helps and like i yeah that's i think that's, that's one one thing i'll for for me that's probably like the biggest thing i've learned having a pod and having the, like my friends is just having some people to chat to and like mm. they understanding and like, even though, yeah, we can take a piss of each other, but like, it's like a relief and it's like a, yeah. you know, yeah. I, That's what you need. Everybody needs it. Um, I'm going to ask a bit more about the podcast in, in two seconds. I'll just read this ad, Kenny, and you can just yeah. relax there for five seconds. <laughs> okay. Fusion Training Center, Monksland Athlone, a place to train in Brazilian Jiu-Jitsu, kickboxing, martial arts, and CrossFit. A great atmosphere with experienced coaches and a real sense of community. If you want to join the team, find us on Facebook at Fusion Training Center or drop in for a chat. Fusion Training Center, train like a warrior. So what I wanted to ask about the podcast, Kenny, was, um, well, a few things, but in particular. So when I was setting this uh, podcast up with John, who does my tech stuff, yeah. it was a mental health podcast. And then it can go in certain ways. When you sat down with the lads, what was the idea behind it? Um, at the very start, really, it came from when we were in when we were in college and sitting around and just having the chats and like we realized that we were like all our experiences were sort of unique and like we understood it and we sort of bounced off each other and like mm. we had so many stories about growing up and we and like that duality of being African and growing up in an Irish uh, sort of setting and we all sort of and it was it was just it was just a laugh all the time and we just we had some really cool stories and some really unique stories. And that's what so we decided. And we were like, one, one day we were like, 
why don't like it would it, that like, we had like a two hour conversation if that was recorded that would be the funniest thing mm. i feel like a lot of people would relate to it especially a lot of black and irish people so then like femi um just came to me one one day and he was like yeah i was I, i'd been thinking of like yeah it'd be cool to start a podcast and stuff because i was listening to podcasts a lot at that time and he was like yeah w- what do you think about it and i was like yeah that'd be that'd be cool and I was like, he, I was, he was like, who are you thinking of like having on and stuff? Who, who do you think we should do it? And then he was like, I think Charlie would be great because he, he always has stories and he's the funniest guy. And then we were like, okay, maybe we'll get some like a fourth person. And then we, then Jibs was the name. And yeah, Jibs is just, he's a character with him himself. So we were like, so that's why we were like, we were like, okay, let's record a pod. Let's like, we, we went into the recording studio, we recorded it. It was just, we just had a chat about our life and growing up and stuff like that. And that's where we started, just talking about our experience of growing up as Black Irish people and the sort of the uniqueness of that and like how a lot of people can relate to that because they can relate to sort of the Black and Irish experience. And then they can also relate to the Irish experience. And then they can also relate to the Black experience as being a Nigerian. So I think we had like a really good sort of, I think we could reach we we felt like we could there's a lot of people that we that would sort of understand us um so yeah that's where we started and then um the head stuff podcast network we recorded with them and like um paddy out in there just really loved that and he was like would you like to come on the network and stuff like that and we started off as it was like air the era part or something like that we started off the name and then they were like yeah you're gonna need to change the name and stuff like that so we came up with pints of malt which again it was like it's a mix of both our irish and like nigerian culture so Malt is a um, is a Nigerian beverage, um, which is actually produced. I think it's pretty much it's a bit like Guinness, really, mm. um, but just non-alcoholic. And then obviously having a pint, um, as Irish as you can get. So yeah. like pint of malt, um, it, it works. And <laughs> yeah, so that's where we started, and we just we just kept on talking about like, our, especially in the early days, it was just about all our all our stories and how we navigated life growing up. Um, recently it's now changed to a bit more about sort of what we do on a day to day and how, how are our views on different things that are going on and like different situations and stuff. And I suppose hopefully trying to give, uh, the black and Irish pints of malt view of, of, of life and how, and what's going on in, in, in society and things like that, but also still, I think, keeping to the core of it's just four lads, just having, having the chats, having the banter. Like, yeah, and uh, you know, I, I listened to the last couple of episodes and I love them. And uh, what I what I was thinking about afterwards, and it was all, it was my first experience last or last night of uh, recording with five people. All right, so yeah. it was the four lads and and myself. Okay, so it was fu- it was fine because it was all just a bit of crack. We were moving away from the mental health thing for an episode, and it it was a bit of crack. But what I find funny and and kind of, I guess, difficult to understand is how you can do the the swing between that serious topics which you do discuss obviously and then the kind of light more light-hearted silly kind of stuff with four people <laughs> um i i get where you're coming from and i i completely agree and i would i would be the same i like if i wasn't part of it i'd be like how yeah how's i think for us, I think it's because of just the relationships that we have yeah, and sort of the understanding that we have. So um, Charlie and Jibs, they've been friends for years, like donkey's years, since like um, since like 12 or 13. And then I, they were in a year above me when I moved to Bob Wigan. So I sort of hung out, hung out with them and stuff like that. Um, and then, so from about 15, 16, I, I became friends with them. Wouldn't they be, they were older, so it wouldn't be like we hung out loads. But then when we got to college, like, so I went to, so Charlie was in, in Trinity as well. And he was a year ahead of me. Then I got into Trinity as well. So we naturally from my beginning, you, just, you sort of stick together. Um, and then Charlie was in the same class, as same engineering class as Femi. So they became really cool, close, obviously. Again, I think that thing of being like, very few black people in trinity at the like at the time as well so you sort of st- you sort of stick together especially with afro sock and stuff like that and then jibs obviously because he's friends with charlie we were always just hanging out and stuff like that so i think 
And then we did a bunch of stuff with like Afro Caribbean Society in college. And we set up Slight Motive in college and we worked together really, like really well. I think so that having those relationships and building those relationships, um, which I think like were, really, were for me very organic and like mm. just um, very sort of sincere. I think that's where, I think that's how we're able to sort of get that balance and strike mm. that balance. They are all incredibly, incredibly funny people who can make a light of anything and everything. And that's something that pretty much all my friends can do. We all just take the piss out of everything, take the piss out of ourselves. And I think, but we're also quite very attuned to life and or sort of our experience of life and like how we see things and how the struggles that we have and the struggles that we have we have had we have had and we still do have so i think going having the mentality of like yeah shit happens we just we just go on with it we just live with it i think it's a very nigerian and irish trait um so i think that works well for us and then obviously the irish are i suppose Aside, probably the biggest banters they, they they as in they are like people are always just making jokes and yeah. like taking a piss out of each other and i and nigerian people are exactly like that okay really pretty much exactly the same even worse yeah sometimes so i think it's just i think we're just i think i've just been lucky and blessed with like friends who are sort of switched on but are still the biggest idiots in the world literally and truly and i'm i'm one of them i like, yeah, okay. I, I say that as 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 an idiot myself you know so but i then, think that's I, how I, we get it we get up we get past it yeah and I, like you said the organic thing is interesting because I, I i often think of bands you know of how they if they know each other for a certain length of time that it's almost they hardly have to look at each other to know that it's time to stop the song or start yeah. the song and yeah. it seems like and i and i get that i get i get that um fully but so what else, what else then um actually i should say pints of malt on all podcast platforms everybody should go and check the lads out because it's it's really good really worth checking out funny yeah, and, yeah no it's good plug funny and serious and, and a bit of everything in there and that's the i uh to be educated as well you know to take things from it where um i would not know or not have experienced is something that's very important to me and it should be important to to, to everybody really yeah. um what else do you like to do in your spare time then kenny so um yeah so like a, so with points of mold and then also sort of black and irish sort of we we're doing a lot try and doing a lot of work with it in, in that sphere and stuff like that so aside from that um i've mentioned slight motive um which again i run with mm. i think charlie and femi on the part are parts of slight motive and then other friends of, of ours um where we sort of just try and promote sort of urban culture um, through like music, uh, uh, movies, videos, different kind of types of things like that, art, poetry, where we just get really cool people and we sort of interview them, put them on like YouTube or put them on our, and then like people send, like it's sort of like a, hopefully trying to be like a media platform as well, where people send in content that we put it up. And and then we wouldn't, we, we used to anyway, we wouldn't events, um, uh, we, people just like come together in a venue, just have, have a bit of a laugh, have a bit of fun and stuff like that. So that was something that I really enjoyed um, that we, and I, like I still do, we're still sort of, again, trying to work it out in this post COVID world. Um, yeah. And aside from that, also, I, I suppose I'm a big, big fan of sports, um, love, love my football and huge Arsenal fan. Um, yeah. Yeah. So yeah, I was, I was glad to be come on to an Arsenal <laughs> fan. Um, but yeah, so like day to day, really, that's like, aside from work like pints slight motive black and irish and then like football sort of consumes my life and um, one thing that i'm really interested in that like i try and try and do whenever i can is sort of giving sort of giving opportunities to young people and sort of or trying to help young people have opportunities so i went to, so i went to trinity but i gained, went into the trinity access program which was like a sort of I don't know if like people know it's like just an access we went to call into Trinity where you do a year and you and they do some really cool work in like it's part of like this broader like hair scheme and day scheme 
um, education system where they do a lot of work with um, schools and they give pe people in disadvantaged areas opportunities to get to do stuff that they normally wouldn't. So like Barbrigan was a was a desk school, but the school I went to, so it's like um, sort of so low socioeconomic um, background basically. And I've done a lot of stuff trying to sort of tap gave me a really big opportunity and gave me a really good opportunity to go into college and I really tried to continue that so I worked I worked a lot with tap during my during my years in college going back to schools mentoring um telling students about like the different opportunities they have different avenues they have that and things like that so that's something that I really really enjoy and I really try and get involved that's it. that's why I'm still working in sort of the youth area in my job trying to again give opportunities with graduate programs and stuff like that um so i like i i did a lot of work i i used to go to faroga when i was in work when i was younger i am um, i'm doing like so like i did like uh, faroga just reached out to me to sort of be on a call on a call on this week for um just to chat to the youths and stuff like that mm. and like for me that's a really big passion of mine because i've seen the advantage of having people there who sort of believe in you and like yeah. give you an opportunity when a lot of times you're just not going to get that opportunity and it's not really your fault it's sort of the situation you put in or like the lot you're given like so i think and it's important that i think students and young people understand that just because they're in a desk school or just because they're in an area that's sort of people don't go to college or mm -hmm. don't get like the big high paying jobs or the big really good jobs doesn't mean that you can't or you you should you shouldn't strive to that so i yeah. always so any chance i can to sort of help tap or help any sort of um foundation like that or sort of um, platform like that i really do so and i really try and champion that um in everything i do i always mention tap that they um, I, I love the guys there they do so so some fantastic fantastic work and like, I think it's really important that people be aware of them and people sort of continue to look out for them. Yeah. I mean, do, do you know, like, I don't know how you uh, get any sleep with the amount of stuff that you <laughs> cover. But no, but that that is hugely important. And it's it's very, you know, I, I think it's, it's great that not only do you do it, but it's about championing it. You know, we never will hear about it otherwise if other people aren't coming out and telling us about it. Yeah. Um, it's a it slight motive that you, that, that's the name yeah right so if anybody wants to go that's on youtube and all the other stuff yeah 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 instagram everything i'm good see this see this kenny i'm working for you it's I no problem it. I, I love it <laughs> i'm so good at this stuff um but I, I did want to talk to you about this kenny because because uh obviously we we talked about football we talked about arsenal and there's a bit of both in this but uh the, the, of course it's it's only happened a couple of weeks ago, two or three weeks ago, when the Euros ended and yeah. England lost in the final to Italy and we all know the rest of it. And regardless of, I don't care if you're up for England. I'm talking to everybody now. You can, yeah. I don't care if you're up for England or Italy or whatever, but I, I really, it's more to talk about what happened after the, the match and about the the three young uh, black players who stepped up to take a penalty. And I was just talking to Kenny about this before. And I, I suppose because Saka took the, ultimate penalty it, it's not it, you know there's arsenal connection there too but the, the the sadness that people should have felt when he spoke about um knowing what was going to happen if he missed the penalty and knowing the yeah. abuse he was going to get um and i just wanted to kind of chat to you about it kenny and see how uh you kind of your idea your, your feelings on it really um yeah I, I yeah it's i know i was with the me, me and the lads and uh, we're we're chilling watching the game um and one of the things we all knew instinct so there was so like yeah most of my like i'm so i'm up in belfast at the moment I'm mm -hmm. like so i'm chilling with my best mate who's back and like his mates they're all back and then there was like there's a there's a mix of us um like from different countries different african countries and stuff like that and and things and one of the things we so i'm saying but we're all sort of um I wouldn't say so sort of traditional Irish and stuff like that. So I think one of the things that we're all very aware of is the repercussions of things. And we literally said, we do not want this to go to penalties. We do not want this to go to the last few penalties and stuff like that. We, because we just know what's going to happen. 
if they miss like even aside from like the race issue like i remember there was a united fan there and he was like i do not want the united lads to take a penalty yeah the yeah you stay gonna get just I don't want it at all so when when did when it happened to be the three three black lads to, to miss the penalty and it was like a last you're just like yeah yeah it's it, it's gonna be a very long week we just know it's gonna be a very long week and I think it's sad the fact that I get sad the fact that that's the first thing that comes to my mind. Yeah. And like it's, I don't want it to be the first thing that comes to my mind. I don't want to have to talk. Like I watch, like as everybody watches sports for a release to enjoy it, to, because it can be like it's, for me, it's the best thing ever for watching football with the lads and just mm. cheering on your team, whether you win or lose. But having to always think about sort of, the consequences of something being and it really coming and it, it being there being like this like if people are slagged for missing a penalty fine i oh, yeah. i've i've slagged the head off of arsenal arsenal players all day every day yeah but like i'm not going to sort of i don't want to have to see them being abused because of their color and it's for me it's just sad and it's one thing that like i, I mentioned earlier that can be quite draining on your mental mm. when that's what you're concerned about every like 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 life is hard in itself and like there's a lot of things going on in life in itself and you, you, there's a lot of things you have to deal with a lot of emotions that you have to deal with but having sort of race be something that's attached onto that mm. makes it a lot harder for black and mixed race and sort of anybody that's just not white and it's just for me it's just sad and it, like i just i knew what, what was going to happen the lads knew what was going to happen we were i we were it was actually i don't know if you know it's sort of 12th up um up in northern ireland so it's like again i didn't know this before him down it's like this thing of i think it was a it's a celebration of the, oh, the battle of the boy and stuff like that sorry sorry the burning of the things yeah and yeah, all yeah, that yeah, kind of stuff. yeah i the first time like i did not know about any of that because yeah in ireland you're not you don't really talk about that and um, and then, so, and then the lads were like, okay, it, it was a bit scary because you didn't want to go, because there's certain areas in, 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 in Northern Ireland, especially that you sort of don't want to go into, mm. apart from being Irish, being, being sort of black, or like, I have sort of a bit, a bit of an English accent sometimes, so you don't really want to go into that. And then being a black person, like having to go home, walking through town. It was a like part of my, my head was like, okay, shit, I, I'm gonna need to be really careful. I'm so glad, like, I was glad that like the lads were driving and stuff like that, so we were a bit safer. But just having that anxiety or having that, like, on being feeling unsafe just because yeah. another lad has missed a penalty, yeah, in a, a sport that really, in the grand scheme of things, does not matter. <laughs> nobody, get, really and truly, nobody cares. No. So, I think just that sort of moving, going from just a penalty miss to sort of feeling like you can't leave a, your mm. a house or a building and stuff like that. Yeah, that can be quite, it's quite tough to deal with. And it's quite, and like, I remember afterwards, I am like, I had to have like me and my girlfriend, we were having a conversation about it and stuff like that. And like, I, like, I felt really sad and like, yeah. I was, like I was trying to sort of explain to her how like my feelings and stuff and how like, so my girlfriend's white. So I suppose that's why it's, it can be quite, not that it's awkward, but like mm. it's hard to have those conversations because she just won't get it instinctively, you know? So yeah. I think, and I think that in itself is, is just something that's draining on you because you're just like, I don't want to have to always explain mm. why I feel like this. Yeah. Do you know? So like I, my heart goes out to I got, goes out to the lads. They get it way, way more than I would ever get it on a, on the daily. I I don't people don't come up to me and be actively racist. People like not to my face anyway. Yeah. Like there's different things people do, different looks I get. Um, I suppose different. There's different things in society that sort of don't make my life any easier. Um, but like. Yeah, so I think sometimes you just like there's no like as lads are, what are we gonna do? Just, yeah, just gotta, we just gotta go go with it. Like 
Yeah, and do you know what? It's, it's it's what you mentioned there about your friend saying, you know, if it's um, you know, I don't want a, Man- a Manchester United player to miss. For for example, we'll use Manchester United. So if, so if a white Manchester United United player steps up and misses the penalty, he's crap or whatever they say about him. He's a Manchester United player, so everybody uh, everybody else hates him from the you know the supporters from other teams. Yeah. But obviously the race is taken off the table and it's only when the weight of the world is on someone like uh, a 19-year-old like Bakaya Saka, Saka stepping up to take a penalty. The weight of the world is on the guy. Like, And it's yeah. the argument there, uh, you know, we can go back into the argument of whether he should be should have been taking the penalty. All that is kind of, uh, when it comes to this conversation, it makes no difference. It's not the yeah. point of the conversation. Um, so, you know, I just I just wanted to chat to you about that and give your thoughts and obviously how how, like, you know upsetting it is and to hear you know there's been some things that have come out of it since and you've seen some teams present Arsenal with the number seven shirt of their club but whether that's just small kind of things that'll yeah, fall by the see, wayside that's that's and that's something that really really at one at one element I appreciate the effort mm. do you know on the other side i'm like and so what yeah. what is that gonna do he's not dead like he's not he's not oh, he's not like in the hospital or something like what like at the end of the day we just don't want want people abusing him mm. because because of his race that's it you don't need like and i find like there's this tokenism with there's this thing with i think it's it's i don't know if it's like a I don't know if it's a worldview or like an Irish view or a UK view where like if something happens, like you'll do a little, you'll do, you'll say like, oh, I'm so surprised about this, all this kind of stuff. But like, no, there's no active changes. Mm. There's no actively, like people aren't being actively banned. There's no laws being in place. There's no education being in place in schools to help children to understand these kind of things. And that's where that's, and because it's because like people don't want to, and that's and it's only black people who want to do this and who mm. want to and want to make this difference. But like, who's gonna care? Like nobody cares like, like about black voices a lot of times. Mm. And like, it's hard for me to say because like I don't. I try and be optimistic as possible. Me and the lads try and be optimistic. Us at Black and Irish, we try and be optimistic about it. But it's really disheartening when you're like, okay, we've told you what the issue is. Yeah. We've told you how we can how you can change it. Do you make some changes? Do you, do you, like, you know, so it's like, I remember I was reading, I was listening to this artist called Dave. I don't know if you know him. Yeah, yeah, I've heard of um, him. He, yeah, he released his new album, um, Psychodrama, uh, not Psychodrama. Um, he released his new album, and he was, he's, he's a very like sort of um, conscious rapper. So he speaks about like really topical issues. Mm. Um, he's a fantastic art, artist, anybody who's interested in and sort of it, like his artistry is just great and it's really good in, um really good insights and he was saying something he said there was a line when he said about like the way people view different things where a movie so there's there was a movie called i think blue story um, and yeah, yeah and then the and which is about sort of violence and and in in, 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 in um, london and stuff like that and the outrage and mm. saying like this is what's causing the violence and stuff like that. But then a movie like Scarface or Godfather <laughs> is celebrated with the same level of violence and yeah. stuff like that. And that's those are the kind of things that like you try to try to highlight and try to change and try to see like these are the trying to these things are what people don't realize and what even I didn't realize when I I, I listened to it and I was like, oh, that is actually so true. And like, I think that's what really affects people and what really pisses people off and yeah. really gets people really angry and really upset and and really downhearted, really. And because like the people don't understand the the, yeah. the differences and people don't aren't willing to understand or aren't willing to change. Do you know there's a strange thing, Kenny, about um, uh, black artists? Um, a lot of white people won't you know, um, watch it or look at it or read it, whatever the, the medium is. Yeah. Um, and I, I, I don't know if it's out of 
you know, thinking that they won't be able to understand it, that point of view, or if there's a there's a level of ignorance to it. And there could be all these things, by the way. Of course, it could yeah. be all these things. Yeah. But I read a lot of I read a lot of books in general. But like when it comes to when it comes to fiction or nonfiction by uh, uh, black writers, but nonfiction in particular, for the very reason of if I don't read it, I won't understand it. So shouldn't I be reading, you know, why yeah. wouldn't they be reading? It's, it, you know, and there's so much, uh, so many interesting historical books, as well as current event uh, things, you know, to do with them, um, to do with uh, black people. And you talked about Blue Story. Blue Story was, was banned for, for a couple of weeks. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> and, be, and like, it's that whole... Like there's so many, there's so there's so many things like that, like are there's so many things that like it's it's hard. It's just for for me, it's it's just quite upsetting because you mm. you see so many things and you're just like like why is it that that's banned? Why is it that like the Olympics are banning like Afro type caps from for swimmers wearing it? Like yeah. what is it? What is that about? Like different things like that you just get frustrated and like you're just like it's not gonna like nothing is gonna change unless people are ready to make the change and yeah i suppose if for black people it's just quite disheartening and it's and it's and yeah it's a conversation that you continue to have and you continue to sort of and like speaking about mental health and stuff like that it's something that really gets you down oh it, it, it really would have to affect you yeah, and do you know what? Just that you mentioned uh, about the Olympic Games and things like that, and it's it's and Blue Story. It's catering to a tiny, tiny group of people who had a bit of a moan about something, yeah. rather than the thoughts and the feelings of a much, much larger group. It's like the idea of you talked about BLM earlier on, actually, and that's a good example of it, where you know the the footballers taking the knee and there was people booing like and, and in in the sta- the states i know is is different than england but like the idea of that they're desecrating the flag by taking a knee you know the language that's used is so over the top yeah. and uh, it's i know and i know it's for a reason if they make it that over the top well then it, they have to stop it you know and i i, I can understand the, the mechanics of it in that way but i can't help but I can't, uh, you know, understand it from your point of view, no, obviously, but I can't help but feel, like you said, these these kind of little token moments that we see that, and I do it sometimes, I go like, when it happens, I'm like, you know, like Rangers giving the, the Saka jersey uh, to the Arsenal team, and I was like, oh, that's really nice, and I slip. And I think, yeah, but what are they actually going to do in the the larger scheme of things? Not just Rangers, by the way, every, every, every team. So, yeah. You know, it's that whole thing of uh, you put a post up recently, actually, about uh, kind of those like systemic racism that may be uh, in this country or other countries. And then there's there's overt racism and there's covert racism. And I guess like I want to ask you a bit about them as well. And I guess that's the reason that I want to read up and find out about these things, because I want to educate myself on it. And, you know, if someone was to ever bring it up in conversation, I'd like to, I'd like to be able to have a an open you know, forthright conversation about it. Yeah. Like when you, when we talk about something like systemic racism, is this a sub? Because first of all, actually, what what is it in 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 the kind of you know definition? It, it is sort of like, I, I'll be honest. Like you, me myself, I wouldn't be sort of a scholar in anything. I am. Mm. Um, I think for me, like even like that language and stuff like that, it's not something that I was aware of until year or two ago mm. like I wouldn't and I wouldn't be something that like it'd be something that because it's something that like sort of I experience I wouldn't necessarily sort of want to read up on it or, yeah. or like and stuff like that for me system, systemic racism is when like there are things in place that don't let that don't allow sort of anybody that's not white to sort of to make progress or to sort of like or it sort of discriminates against people that are not white like things like things like for example in the UK where they were able to somehow turn around and say a load of the people that came through 
they came to from the Caribbean during the Wind, Windrush um, generation were not legally allowed to be in the country and had to be deported. It, like legally and stuff like that, it, it, it's been, there's, they've, they, there's rules and stuff in place that makes the people able to do this. But like everybody with like sort of a conscience or with, with some sort of decency will know that that makes no sense and that shouldn't be happening. Or things like in schools where like, um, teachers are able, teachers are, can be quite biased sometimes, or teachers are like allowing people to say, use the N word in, because they're reading um, one of um, that book. Oh, what's, the book? Uh, it's, what's his name with the, with the beard? Mark Twain. Um, is it Mark Twain? I don't, it, oh. The, Huckleberry the one, Finn? Yes, that one. And there's another one. Uncle Tom, um, Uncle Tom's uh, Cabin. Oh, sorry. No, that's all right. That's all right. Yeah, but like, do you know, because you in, in English class, you have to read the books and you have to read that yeah. and stuff like that. To and Kill like, a Mockingbird. To Kill a Mockingbird. That's... that's the one, right? And like the fact that like these things are sort of like just allowed and just commonplace, you don't sort of understand the effect that it has on like a fellow black person or someone else in, in, in the class. And like just living things like that and different policies that are in place mm. to sort of police black people like you can't have your hair a certain way you can't this is unprofessional yeah. and things like that in those are this sort of little systemic things that society have accepted as the norm because it's what it's norm for white people mm -hmm. but it's not what is norm for black people if you go to if you go to an, to nigeria and you go into this house of assembly very few people are wearing suits they're wearing their native clothing and that is seen as professional for them right in the uk what's professional is wearing a suit and stuff like that which is fine but you can't just you can't say you can't then say that like you can't sort of make the you can't be sort of like there's it's it's hard to explain system yeah. systemic racism if you're not sort of well versed on it but it's just these little things that are in place to sort of keep you down yeah like the way certain in in america certain black people can't get really can't have good credit because mm. of just of the area that they live in and because of the area that they live in they can't get out of that cycle mm. and because of that cycle they can't improve their lives it's those little those things that are in place those rules that have been in place to sort of from to benefit white people essentially that like just don't benefit black people that just don't help black people in the in the system or don't yeah. help them sort of improve their livelihood the systemic thing of for example with the policing system in in, in ireland like there is a clear bias against black people and it's hard to prove because it's systemic because mm. it's within the the system people are, like are it's not that they're actively trained to be against black people but the rules and policies in place saying that oh you need you should stop you should like stop and search in certain areas or yeah. you should um be wary of people in certain in a kind of in this kind of car it's those kind of things that make it really that like that for me, I like that sort of create that whole system and create that whole like institution of racism. Yeah, and like there's there's this there's another there's I suppose there's many ways of we could you could run through about how Ireland could change yeah. regards to racism and there's 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 a whole lot of things. There's there's one thing that I will have noted over the years, and it, it's not just to do it with, with to do it race. It seems to be just to do it minorities, whether it's you know, a, a different race or someone, uh, someone's um, gender or, yeah. you know, their sexuality, yeah. whatever Completely. it might be. And I've noticed, uh, and like Kenny, I'm sure you can, you've seen the same things, uh, but 10 times uh, worse, but it seems to be little remarks that I've noticed, you know, these kind of little smart remarks that people think, are, people think they're hilarious, you know, when they, when they say it. And when I was, when I was a kid, I started picking up at it quite early on and I start, it's it did annoy me. And so what I used to do is kind of bite back, not like in a, you know, look at me, I'm not going to beat anybody up, but I, I, I would say, don't be saying that it's stupid, whatever it might be when I was a kid, 
that's followed me. I've always kind of done that. Yeah. But it's not an easy thing to do. What no, it is with me all. now, it's become, a, 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 and this is kind of makes it a bit worse, I think, that it's become a joke on me. So people will still say really terrible, crappy things about people just to annoy me, which seems probably twice as bad because they're not only saying terrible things about people, but they're also trying to annoy me. But when uh, we talk about uh, racism, there's this kind of the term casual racism. It makes it sound kind of jovial, you know, as if it's, it's a good thing. What are your experiences with that kind of racism? Yeah, so like um, I mentioned, um, I think I mentioned that in that video that we were talking about earlier that I posted up. Um, yeah, it's things like these, like another word for is like microaggressions, mm. where like people just say different things or like comment on different things. And you're just like, what, what, what's the, why? Like yeah. things like when someone wants to touch your hair, or when someone asks you, like, I, I got this a lot, like, where are you really from? Um, when I tell them, oh, yeah, I'm, I'm yeah. from Brigham. And, like, I, at one, see, and again, it comes to this thing of, like, at one stage, I understand it because I'm like, okay, obviously, you just, you know, some people can just be curious and mm. stuff like that. And a lot of, not like, a lot of people are really in that category where they're just curious and they just want to know and stuff like that. But, like, when you get that, every single day from mm. people it becomes like a, it's like a beast thing and eventually it's just like you're like oh just like shut up i don't care mm. like i'm like i've told i told the last hundred people where i'm from i don't want to tell you where i'm from like i'm from by brigham just accept it you yeah. know <laughs> or i don't want you to touch my hair because i don't want you to touch my hair for, yeah. like, for, like personal space and all that you know <laughs> so are things like like they like the thing of like calling like black women like always like sassy or fierce and stuff yeah. like that when they speak up or sort of if i'm not in the mood to speak or i'm just like just there like literally just chilling i am sort of uh angry black man or something yeah. like that when i'm just i really just, i don't just don't care about what's yeah, going yeah. on I'm just, I'm just chilling so it's those kind of things where you're not allowed to or when like like yeah those passing remarks mm. that really really great on you and it can be quite hard to sort of police them and it could be quite hard to speak up even speak up about them and like it's one of the things that we try and teach people and it's probably the biggest way especially on a day-to-day -day basis is mm. the biggest way you can help someone or be an ally is by sort of calling these kind of things out yeah and so when someone says something that's inappropriate even if they didn't mean it it's still inappropriate because like some like um it's not about the intent it's or it's not about it's like it's not about like what you intended to do it's how yeah. you make people feel and like you have to be and like people have to be aware of that if you say something you're gonna you, and it's not right or it's not wrong you, you you're people are entitled to call you out on yeah. it and you don't have to feel bad about that what it, i know it can be quite like sort of embarrassing or quite upset and we're like oh shit I've, I've hurt you and stuff like that and like but if you learn from it and you sort of like un or try and say, educate yourself and be like okay okay so sorry what should I said there what yeah. should I have done there then that's a lot better for example you you asked me earlier what my second name is mm. a lot of people I, I I always find I always thought like my second name isn't that difficult of a name to <laughs> pronounce but like obviously people get it wrong and that's yeah. fine but like just having the thing of at least trying it or at least saying, oh, what is the right pronunciation? Yeah. And then saying that that goes a long way to sort of easing that thing of not being the odd one out or that, yeah. that thing I was mentioning of that anxiety of not feeling like you're like feeling anxious about being in an environment that you're not usually in. Yeah, you know, so it's those kind of things that really help people on the day to day because it makes the it makes your life a lot easier when you're not anxious about, oh, someone's going to say my name wrong, someone's going to say something offensive that more like more often than not, I really it goes over my head. I really don't care. Yeah, but like there be there will be. It's a bit like when some like, like I suppose there's the thing where like certain times there's mo like loads of things don't trigger you. 
But there's certain days when you're feeling a bit down and like something happens and it does trigger you and you, you spiral. And I think it's about sometimes being aware of that and being understanding to that. Um, so yeah, those, and like, like as I suppose, as trying to be an ally and stuff like that, especially in an environment when there's no sort of black person or something, it's important to, to call it out there. Absolutely, yeah. Because, and, because, and that's the thing, because I can never know what happens when I'm not there or how yeah. people feel about me as a black person. I can only hope that people respond to me just uh, as I as as a human as I respond to them, yeah. Or are they speak to speak about me, or as they speak about other black people in the in a decent manner, you know? Yeah. So so no, so have knowing if you if if a black person knows in themselves that like there's people out there that are advocating that are like sort of calling people out, you being you become a lot more comfortable in society in yeah. sort of being in the um being in the pub or being in work or going to the gym stuff like that in the day-to-day life you know because you know that like you're not gonna be it's it's there's no like underlying mm. like thing there yeah. you know i think the thing about it as well kenny when i talk about calling people out and i want like any if it was younger people listen to this to know that like don't there's ways of doing it as well and like mm. you said there's the idea of there's uh, the person who's saying it may not even think it's an offensive thing to say. So that's in your part to just say, look, I think you need to change the language in that a bit. And I and I, I, I say again, it's about race and sexuality and gender and all those things. Yeah, exactly. We all do it. No yeah. less. It's important right. to kind of keep going. I will. I also say one thing because I know that the touch your hair. Can I touch your hair thing is one thing that's brought up so often. And I can understand what a strange request that is. <laughs> but. Yeah. Emma Dabiri wrote a book called Don't Touch My Hair. For anybody who wants to read it, it's absolutely brilliant. And uh, she's a, she's an Irish writer and she's uh, she talks about the history of, of African hair, actually. Yeah. But interlaces uh, it with, um, you know, her childhood and growing up as a, a, a black child in Ireland. And it's it's really, really brilliant. I wanted to mention it. Yeah, but um, sure. Kenny, it's been it's been an absolute joy to have you on. Thank you. I really appreciate it. It's been great to have a chat. I always, I always love having a chat with people, especially different people that I don't, you wouldn't usually chat to. Yeah. And like, especially or, or different topics that I usually wouldn't uh, chat to. And like, I like for me, like, I, like, I know like, um, this, like the part is all about mental health and stuff like that. And we've talked about, touched on a lot of stuff. And like, mm-hmm. for me, it's always, helpful sort of hearing about different things like i was yeah. saying i was i was i was i'm um, listening to the part earlier and like sort of understood a lot like you, you what you you were talking about sort of um your i think you were getting over a low point and yeah. stuff like that and i was and that's something that like i wouldn't hear on a daily basis or i wouldn't sort of being exposed to so hearing about that and understanding that a lot more really for me helps me in my sort of dealing with mental health and like understanding how i'm feeling and i always uh, re- re- like relish the opportunity to talk to someone new and like understand a different aspect and stuff like that so i really appreciate you having me on and no for let sure let me ramble for no for not all. It's and, brilliant. and it's the same i would it, it's kind of one of those things that's right back at you with regards to your own podcast because again it's experiences outside of mine and it's so interesting to learn and especially when you can tell the four lads are good friends enjoying each other's company that makes a huge difference as well of course you know that kind of the, the kind of back and forth that you have but it's been brilliant kenny hang on one minute for me i just want to get a photo with you when i close it out no worries so thanks very much to um john as always for the for the engineering and the editing and all the things he does uh thanks my mom my dad glenda jerk calvin uh we're on youtube as i said earlier on facebook instagram twitter Spotify, Apple, Anchor, Google Podcasts. I don't know. I still read this. I should know it. Um, (laughs) And also thanks to everyone for for listening this week. I hope you enjoyed. I had a great time. And once again, Kenny, really appreciate it. Thank you for having me on. Thanks, everyone. And we'll talk to you next week. Bye.